welcome. This is our fifth Cambridge lecture series and um, the talk this week is uh, slightly different because we wanted to focus on something that some of you might not be thinking about yet because you're quite young but um, it is something you will be thinking about in the future and um, there is there is life after um, Cambridge homeschool and um, once you're 18 you will be moving on to do something different and you may choose to do what's known as a gap year like it's all about. that means you don't go straight yeah, on to a university course or an apprenticeship you take a year out and you do something very different um, I might just try to mute um, young Mrs. Graham. Give me two seconds. There we are. Oh no, she's muted now. Okay, so uh, yeah, a gap year is something where it's an opportunity for you to do something completely different. It could be related to your future career or it could be some work experience in some part of the world you've always wanted to go to. Um, and it could take you on a whole new direction in life. People who do gap years don't regret it. Um, on the other hand, you may decide that you want to go straight to university. And so for that reason, we've got a lecture in two halves today. So the first half, I thought the best ambassadors we have to talk to you about getting ready to apply for a course after school and um, to talk you through what that's like making decisions and um, both practically and also in your head and your heart would be um, students in our own sixth form. So four students and um, Kyla, Kyra, uh, Julia and Jude are here this evening to chat to you. And then if we've got some time left, I will play you a recorded talk from a company called Oyster. And Oyster, as you can imagine, it's full of hidden delights. They organize um, gap year work experiences for students, young people from 17 and older all over the world. Uh, to go and experience a bit of life but because of covid they've scaled down their communications at the moment they're not doing live talk for us they've done a recorded talk for us and um, so if we've got time later we'll do that but i want to give um the stage to our four sixth form students they're here to give you a little snippet of what they've done and then give you the opportunity for some questions afterwards so, um, can I ask, I know Julia has got a commitment to go to, so I was going to ask Julia if she could um, come online on the mic and chat first. If she is here, let me check that she's here. I can see yes. my other students are. Yes. Is that yes? I thought I heard, heard you. Yes, she's here. Brilliant. Julia, I think you might need to turn your volume up somehow. Can you hear me? Can you hear me or is it still low? Yeah, I can hear you. Mr. Boylan, can you hear Julia loud and clear? I can hear her like a... I can indeed. Excellent. Maybe okay, super. We, uh, maybe if me and you just mute our microphones when Junie is talking, Miss Trafford, because there's some sort of back and somewhere. I don't know where it's coming from. Excellent. OK, Julia, we will hand over to you if you would like to give a little chat for five minutes on on um, what's happening to you next year and how you got there and your your thoughts about it all. Yes, thank you. So um, I would be going to university next year. I have actually already applied for university and I am looking towards doing law at university. And 
Um, I guess it came about like different ways, but then the most thing that had an impact in my decision to university was, I guess, uh, the situation in my country. So about at the age of 10 or 11 or so, there was like a political kind of like turmoil or whatever in our country. So it was not the impact it had on me was like devastating and um, it made me curious about the law and stuff because I looked at it and I was like, OK, I can't be living in fear daily, although things have changed now and there's a new precedent and all. But being in a country where we had a dictator, it was like scary, so it caused me to kind of like think what way can this be solved? Like, what is the issue here? And um, it kind of like drew me towards law because I was thinking the justice system, like something has to be wrong at that side. So from then I can, my interest for law like grew more and more. And um, I guess it kind of impacted the subjects I chose at A-levels, but regardless of that, I tried to choose subjects that I was still passionate for because I guess it makes more sense doing things that you like and you're passionate about because if you do something that you're not interested in and pressure was put on you to do it, at the end of the day, you're not going to do as well as you should and your full capacity, like what your, your potential is. So for me, that was doing history, economics and literature at a level and i've gone through this process process of my application wherein i had to write a personal statement and you kind of like have to go through what has encouraged you and what has intrigued you and interested you in what you want to do and it really has to be strong and just it has to be about yourself i mean when i first started the process it was kind of like scary and stuff but as I went through it, it was easier because I had help from so many teachers. Like CHS is like incredible because I had Mrs. Trafford, Mrs. Howard, Mr. Boyle, and like everyone was on board and they just helped me. And the process went smoothly and my applications are in and I'm just waiting for like responses. I actually had two offers, but like there are others that I'm waiting for and stuff. So yeah, it's just been nice going through this. University was something that I uh, thought of a long time ago. It's always been like something I feel like that environment is where I would thrive and like to get my full potential and achieve the dreams I want, like being a lawyer and being able to advocate for people in my country. So things like being in a situation where there's a dictator wouldn't really happen and they would think there'll be laws in place to solve that issue. So yeah, I guess that's it for me. Amazing, amazing, Julia. And um, I'm sure we've got a few questions for you. I do want to point out here, Julia has been really ambitious and strong in her application. She's applied to Cambridge. And um, we really hope that, you know, wish her every success with that application. And um, she's presented herself brilliantly well. So if any of you have aspirations for Oxbridge, Julia's definitely a student. You should be knocking on her team's chat window and, and seeing what she can tell you. Um, do we have any questions from anyone for Julia? Yes, Aditya. Thank you, Mrs. Trafford. Julia, you said earlier in your country there was a dictator uh, position, a dictator who sing there was political turmoil, and that's what inspired you to pursue law. Can you provide a bit more description on the specifics that encourage your aspirations? Yes, so basically by then I was in school, so I think I was in like 
year six also going into form one and I was like I was filled with so much fear like going to school I felt like I was going to be kidnapped because there were things that were going on like people being kidnapped people being murdered and all of that because the leader at that time wanted to stay in power even though people were against that so it was scary and that kind of like I was curious as in who is in control of this and what can be done what things can be put in place to change this because I don't want anybody to go through what I have gone through and for the people that have already gone through it like the parents being murdered and all of that for them to find justice because there's still things that are going on like a conference for truth and reconciliation so it went on and they're trying to find laws that should be implemented and yeah thank you first of all it definitely is inspiring to see you seek out justice amazing amazing julia and a really unique experience that you are turning into a, a positive um hafsa has a question yeah, I've um, I wanted to ask which country is this in? I've never heard of this before. Oh, yeah, sorry, I forgot to mention that with all I spoke about. Oh, it's okay. Um, I live in the Gambia. Oh, Gambia. Oh, I I had no idea that was going on there. Wow, that's really insightful. Thank you. Brilliant. Thank you, Julia. And um, there might be some more questions for you later. I don't know. I know you've got another appointment, but um, students can always get in touch with you through through the school chat. Um, that's brilliant and good luck. I think you're going to be an incredible solicitor advocate uh, at some point in your life. You already do so much. I know you do lots anyway even um, before you've gone to uni to advocate for women and all sorts of things. So thank you. Um, we have uh, another applicant or um, from a different sort of um, course, and that would be Jude. I wonder if Jude could tell us about her experience, because I know it's, it's very different. Everybody's very different. So we've done this deliberately. Hello, Jude. Oh, hello, Mrs. Trafford. Thank you so much for this opportunity for me to open up about my application process and post-18. Um, a little introductory about myself. Hi, I'm Juju Spinamamishik. I'm 17. I'm also part of the head pupil team as deputy head girl of the school. I'm very delighted to meet everyone here. Um, where should we start about my life? Well, I'm applying to medicine. And this came from another chapter in my life where I was seven years old. I was rummaging through my mom's library for no reason and came across a book about medicine. And the book just had medical terminologies in chronological order about diseases. I know it sounds very crazy that that actually influenced my passion for medicine. Um, I just... I'm really interested and curious about the medical world and science. And you may be thinking, if I have such a profound love for science, why didn't I just become you know, a scientist? Well, I want to alleviate human suffering. I want to help people, those in need, who have you know, medical illnesses or just need maybe somebody to a shoulder to lean on, and so on and so forth. So for me, my application process had to begin early because for medicine, you have to apply a year early as there are many applicants. It can be a little bit grueling as you know, you're know you probably 16, 17 at the time and you have no idea where you're going with this life. But I must say that all the research that I made about universities have been really helpful. I never had really um, a a shoulder to lean on about universities. I was very independent about it. But if you are independent about it, I must tell you that you reassure yourself that you'll get the most information if you look by yourself, if you compare things. So basically, there are various post-18 options out there, such as maybe taking a gap year, you know, joining a workforce, you know, already getting a job. 
or continuing one's higher education. Obviously, there is no right or wrong choices. At the end of the day, it's a personal preference to what suits the individual best at that time in their life based on their personal goals. For me, I decided to directly apply to university and continue my higher education as I have a passion and desire to become a doctor. It seems like the best possible choice for me to continue my undergraduate education. Now, undergraduate education is just basically continuing your studies for medicine, studying about the topic more. It can be grueling being a medical student um, with long studying hours and maybe internship. Therefore, I personally prefer diving straight into it. Also, the Faculty of Medicine requires several more years compared to other courses. For me, I have to study six years, and if I want to become a specialist, maybe an additional four years. Um, hence, I am on a roll with my studies. It's the best to continue with the same momentum. Um, I hope that I will, I will, all in all, it boils down to your own aspirations and personal goals. And as Julia mentioned, I must say that it must be your own decision and what you want in your life. Because if you're not motivated enough to do it, you'll just eventually get very sad and depressed that you're like, why did I choose this career when it's not even something that I like? So it really does boil down to what interests you, what are you really passionate about? And for me, that is medicine. I hope this was insightful enough for you guys. The Please don't think that it's too early to consider about your career and um, higher education or university applications. It's never too early to have insight about this stuff. Um, thank you so much for listening to me. Does anyone have any questions? Yeah, thank you, Jude. Um, really interesting. And you, you've, you're also aiming high, I know, with your application. And good luck with that. Um, and medicine is one of the most competitive courses in the in the UK. And um, it's also possibly one of the ones that most parents want their kids to do also. <laughs> that you said the key thing, if it's not in your heart and it's not your motivation, then, then don't do it. Um, who would like to ask Jude about her um, choices, any questions at all? Yes, um, Emily. Uh, I was just wondering what subjects you took during your A-levels to study medicine. Okay, that's a great question. Well, I'm currently taking business, literature, bio, and chemistry. I mean, I have a profound love in all, so I decided to take them, but it is a must to take a subject in the sciences, which is the best thing to do, and a subject out of the sciences to show that you are a well-rounded person. Thank you. Let's see, do we have any other questions for Jude? Yes, Hafsa's hand is up, although it might be up from before. Let's hear from Harrison because we've not heard from you tonight. So did you have any points where you were like, oh, no, I can't go on? It's like it's like you lo nearly lost your heart, but you just managed to carry on. Actually, that's a really interesting, intriguing question. Um, yes, there were times where, you know, you feel like you are at a point where you're giving up. For example, my studies kind of overtook my personal life. I felt I was very academic, never really had people to rely on or to talk to but I must say that all the hard work is actually paying off yes I did feel that I wanted to give up at certain points but it's never really about that idea you should have a mindset that would motivate you if you really have a strong passion nothing will actually come between it there there are no boundaries you just need to strive forward I hope that makes sense, Harrison. Great question. And we've got a question from Asha. Uh, I was wondering what type of doctor do you want to be? Is it like, uh, example, eye specialist, gynecologist, psychiatrist, general doctor, like which one? Well, I am more into the neurology side of things, so I want to become a neurosurgeon. 
Wow, a brain surgeon. I have a very good friend who's a brain surgeon in London and they have a phrase, the brain surgeons, never the same again when the brain hits, when the air hits your brain. So you've got to be careful. <laughs> um, a very high risk. Um, they're all high risk, aren't they? And that's why you have to be so dedicated, so hardworking, so careful, so perfect with your attention to detail. And, and you've been brilliant. You've been in the schools since um, the start of L6. You've done an amazing job, been an amazing presence already. So thank you, Jude. Thank you. And if any of you have any more questions or thoughts about medicine, Jude is the person to go to. Um, so I'm wondering if we could hear from, um, we'll give you all a big clap at the end of this, but if we could hear from Kayla. Of course. Um, hi everyone, I'm Kayla. I'm also in L6. I'm a little bit nervous because well, I've got a neuroscience uh, and two lawyers and uh, it's not quite my path, but um, I have more of a creative streak in me, um, a little bit towards music and art, but it is never easy um, knowing what you want. It's not something that you'll wake up one day and think, Phew. well, okay, unless you get lucky, you won't wake up and be like, oh, you know what? This is exactly how my life is going to go, and this is what I'm going to study to do it. Um, one of the most important things that I find is really exploring different things that you think you may be interested in. So if you think you might want to be an artist, do art. Um, I did art for two weeks and I dropped it and I thought I was going to be Van Gogh. So that was a stilt in my kind of academic route um but instead of just giving up and being like maybe i should keep going even though this doesn't feel right you have to keep exploring mm, just like jude i didn't intend to go into music um i'm a music producer i never intended for that i opened my computer one day i was bored late at night four in the morning and just Messing around, I went on to GarageBand, which is music software, and it clicked. It was like something felt really good and really enjoyable doing it. And from that day, I've been kind of going into this journey of really trying to explore music production as a professional career. And I guess it's not easy. It's a job that has also a lot of competition and whether it's in art, um, music, pretty much almost any job, but especially jobs that are kind of seen as the less professional, it is hard to make your way into the industry. It takes time, it takes commitment, just like anything else, but it pays off if it's what you really enjoy doing. Um, my main piece of advice is not only follow your heart, that is extremely important. If you're stuck in a job that you do not enjoy, that you don't like, it will kind of demotivate you. It will make you, like Jude said, it can make you extremely depressed. It can kind of alter how you feel about your life in general, but you need to explore and explore with your heart. So try different things. If you think, hmm, what's painting like? Paint a little bit. Um, if you think, what's music like? Get a little ukulele and start playing and it might lead you into being a guitarist. Mm, but that kind of experience only comes with experimenting. And I think that's one of the most important things because that's how I found my path. And I'm extremely lucky that I did because nothing else felt right. I'm not into science. I'm not into law. I'm not particularly into really anything except music because that's my driving force in my life. That's what pushes me to wake up in the morning, what keeps me up at night and kind of stops me from going to bed too, um, which sometimes is a good thing. But I think at this age, especially, you guys are so young, you still have so much time, but right now, think about doing different things. Um, never stick to doing one thing all the time. Never think, okay, because I am interested in science, I'm only ever going to do science. Try experimenting, try a little bit of art, try music, uh, try horse riding, maybe if you're interested in it, but you really need to play around with things that you think you might be interested in because that's how you find what you're good at. 
and that's if that's your talent and you find something that you're good at, you can harness it and you can push it into a job and a career. Because if you have enough talent, if you have the passion, the love, the drive, then there's nothing that can hold you back. And I know that especially parental forces are something that we think about. What is my mom going to think? What is my dad going to think? Are they going to have an issue with what I'm doing? I had that problem because my dad, you know, he's very much kind of pessimistic a little bit sometimes. He thinks that, well, a job should be something where you go nine to five in the morning, office job, uh, type in the computer, earn your salary, go home and then do your music and listen to your parents a lot of the time, but not always because I didn't listen to my parents. Um, and I just did it anyway. I went into music full force. I'm still going. And though this coming year, it's empty. I haven't really got um, anything planned yet. I want to have a job for summer because work experience is still important. Having a base salary, having a sturdy job is very important because music can kind of be on the rocks. You don't know when your next salary is going to be necessarily. So still focus on school, focus on a base education, and from there pursue into things that you really want to do, um, especially if they're academic based. But for the year ahead, focus on exams. I'm focusing on my exams. I'm doing my last year. And then I'm going to go for college and further education in professional music production. And then who knows what it'll hold, but that's my main advice is think a lot about what you want to do, experiment, use your head, but use your heart and follow what feels right. Even if your parents are telling you that you're going to make no money, um, it doesn't matter because sometimes happiness is also worth it. And that's pretty much all I have to say. So thank you for listening. It, that that was fantastic and so valuable um, such a valuable message and even the idea of just taking one little step at a time you're going to focus on achieving the the best results you can this year see where it leads to i'll put you in touch with my niece she's about 24 now and working with um sony as a music producer there you go and um she's doing what appeals to her heart uh, just like you say your passion and your heart um so exciting, really wonderful listening to you. Um, let's hear from Kyra and then I think um, I would like to ask you all, all of our speakers, a couple of questions. Um, sorry, I haven't allowed for questions for you yet, Kyla. Uh, who would like to ask Kyla a question on, on what she has been chatting to us about? So interesting. And of course, very different. Hafsa. I've actually listened to your music before. It's it's really good. <laughs> I enjoy it. Um, uh, I wanted to know, like, what was your favorite song you made? Because a lot of them are really good. Thank you. Um, yes, I have released some music. Um, and that's also something. Exploring genre, uh, another example of exploring to find. Um, my favorite song, that's really difficult because I kind of put my soul into all of them. Um, so picking one is hard, but either Insecticide or I Worship You. Um, it has to be one of those two. But generally, I think, even though it sounds really cliche and kind of cheesy, they're all my favorite song because I have a special place for all of them in my heart. Um, so it's, it's hard to choose, but... Probably my most recent album that I released is my favorite. Um, but thanks for your question. Kyla, do you have your music on a streaming system that we can access? You need to put a link for us in the assembly. I do. Um, some of them are not massively um, family friendly, so I wouldn't play it to like a, a you know, Understood. It's not, it's not bad. It's not too bad. You just have to watch the like the explicit E on some of them, and then you'll be fine. But um, understood. It's mostly safe. Um, yeah. I Under might... parental guidance. Yeah. Well, um, yeah, I do have a link, and I will put that in the assembly chat. But that's also super important. If you go into music, advertising promotion is like key. Um, but yeah, I'll put it in the chat. Thank you for asking. 
brilliant. Um, Harrison has a question. This is more like a statement. My dad is actually like a, a like someone who produces music, so I kind of would understand that it would take a lot of time. So my guess is you it would take like more than I'd say like um this is a round estimate, but I think it's like five hours each day because and then. And then I know I sort of understand what your parents would feel like because my dad would go on the computer and stay on the computer day till night, honestly. I just sit there watching him from the room of my book. So it's like, it's like, uh, when are you going to be off your computer? I'd, like, I would be thinking, <laughs> and then he, uh, he would be, like, not answering me, typing away. Um, so, yeah, I think I understand what your parents would feel like. Yeah, Amazing. That's true. That's a fair guess. Um, of course, music production is super involved on the computer so your computer is your best tool um your laptop interface your equipment so i can understand your dad um i think as well music is one of those things once you get started it's very hard to stop and pull away from the computer and be like Phew. okay enough of the day you can easily get dragged into music production for hours uh if you have the passion for it that is um mr boylan has a question do you think the rise of the internet has given you the confidence to go into music now because you can put yourself out there without a producer or you think it would have happened without social media? Yeah, that's a really good question. Um, yeah, absolutely. I mean, the internet now is, is everywhere and it's everything. Um, I think it's a balance. You have to be able to have your skills in real life. You have to be able to you know, if you want to sing, you want to be a vocalist online, sure, you can use all of the auto-tune in the world. But if you can't sing in real life without a computer, um, it's not going to get you too far, especially if you start concerts. Um, but yeah, promoting myself, especially seeing how many artists there are, um, it kind of helps you learn about yourself as an artist because you're looking at other people's work, you're listening to it, I mean, music is is everywhere now, so you can hear some of the most iconic singers and think, how do I want to sing? How can this influence me? How can this push me? Um, wow, look at my friend. She's a music producer. She's had 5,000 streams on this album, and you can learn from music. You can learn from social media. You can learn from the internet. I sometimes search up, oh, EQ. What is EQ? I don't even know what that is. I look it up and there is such a world of information that without the Internet, music is a lot harder to get into. That's why I mentioned before is that social media promoting yourself, but also seeing other people getting contact. Contacts are extremely important who you know um, and who you can talk to. It's it's vital because otherwise it's going to be a lot more difficult to make a path and make especially a profile for yourself on the internet. You have to have a character. Can I ask one more question? Sorry. The, in, in terms of the people that listen to you and contact you and maybe are fans or whatever term you want to use, have you been surprised by any sort of either whether it's some random place in the world where so, you know someone listens to your music uh, as anything uh, in terms of have you got any fans or any people that listen to your music from anywhere that you would never have imagined someone was listening to you i think there was at some point i think it was like something like um maybe like south america or something and i, I just I mainly I'm very small as an artist still. I don't have a huge following. I'm still working into content creation because when you're an artist, con like content creation, yourself as a, a person, videos, profiling, that is something that also you have to think about. Music is never just, oh, I made a song. It's who you are as a person um, and your character. So I haven't really been out there just yet. So my uh, my fans, my friends who are supporting me, I usually can see, I'll be like, oh yeah, yeah. I know that person who streamed this one song like 25 times. He's in 
England. Yeah, yeah, I know exactly who that is. Like, I'm usually pinpoint people, but they'll, yeah, every now and again, there'll be like someone in South America. And I'll be like, oh, pretty cool. Okay. Someone in uh, Africa, someone in South America. Um, I hope one day maybe I can grow enough to get someone in like Antarctica, and then that'll be really interesting. Um, but maybe with time. <laughs> Fantastic. Um, and Zenya. Uh, hi, yes. So I just wanted to ask, where do you aspire to study if you would even like to study at a university? Mm, thank you for asking. Well, um, I was very unsure. Um, the dream is Berkeley in uh, Valencia because I live in Spain and so Berkeley pff, Wow, what an incredible school. It literally looks like a palace um, and it's so heavily equipped in like uh, everything you can imagine, the the mixing studios. Uh, they've got so much equipment that it almost makes you cry. Uh, I can just imagine walking in there and like having my mind blown, but uh, you have to be realistic when you're choosing uh, places to go financially, also in terms of what they expect of you, um, grades, maybe you yourself as a person, you have to kind of know what you're capable of going into. So I want to go into a college that is actually here um, where I live. I live in Mallorca, which is a tiny little island in Spain. And um, we don't have Berkeley here, unfortunately, but there is a music production school that is called uh, ICE, I think. And it is not fancy. It's affordable and it is small and it is kind of, they have well-equipped studios, but it's not massively Berkeley, put it that way. You know, Berkeley holds a, a very high, thick reputation for being an incredible kind of American school. Um, I think if you ever get into uni, you just have to know kind of what you can and can't do financially, for one thing, but also um, the grades that they expect of you. Music College, the one that I'm going to study here on my island, does not expect um, A grades and A star, which is in a way very like relieving because you don't have to be straight A student to get into um, the one here. But just um, is yeah, the one here It's easy. It's um, it's convenient. You don't have to get an apartment and move into a whole different place. But here, <laughs> thank you for your question. Fantastic, um, Kyla. Thank you so much. So interesting. We will be watching your star rise, um, <laughs> of course. And um, that leaves us with our last speaker, who is Kyra. Thank you, Mrs. Trafford. And hello, everyone. Good evening, at least it is for me. Um, when I was a child, I wanted to be a vet because in my country, in Turkey, there are street cats everywhere. As you can see, this little fella I picked up off the street as well. And they are often in bad situations. They're quite sick, diseased, and they all die quite early on. So as a child, I really wanted to be a vet. But as I went through middle school, I was introduced by Model UN and I went to different countries for it. I went to different cities for it and I realized I had a real passion for it and a real talent for it. I didn't really know what I was doing, but I realized I enjoy speaking in front of people. I enjoy being able to help people, not in a medicinal aspect. Sorry, Jude. And being able to talk about law, reform, countries. And I realized it was just my passion to help things in general, help people. So that little element that I had from helping animals transformed into people. And I did a lot of research for that. I did a lot of reading. I surrounded myself with debate clubs and I applied for the head pupil position, which I got. Thank you, Mr. Boylan. And I realized the reasons why I want to do this is so I can help people and become an organizer, being a manager in this aspect. So for university, I'm thinking of international relations and politics. I want to study in England and I want to work through there as well. Unfortunately, I have to have some health problems, which is the reason why I came to the school in the first place. I originally wanted to apply to Cambridge, like Jude is applying to Oxbridge, but my health has prevented me from doing that. And like Kayla, I'm not thinking of it at the moment, but I'm thinking of it in my master's. I'm also quite interested in psychology and psychiatry and law as well. 
And thankfully, you don't have to study four years in England to become a lawyer. You just have to do one year of extra study of law and then you can get the exams and then qualify, which is good. And I would say out of all of this, it has taught me a lot to be flexible, especially with my own health conditions, especially with anything life throws at you, to be flexible, to take a step back and to acknowledge your own limits. You may have a passion and a desire for something, but the current situation, the status quo may not allow you to do that. And being able to say, all right, that's OK, I'm going to take a step back and I'm going to choose another path. I can still do what I want to do, but it just needs some time and I need to be where I am now. And that's why I'm applying to Russell Group Universities, which are in the 25th percentage of the good universities in the UK. And I'm going to work for those and I'm going to go ahead with that. But I'm also not going to limit myself to just international issues and politics. I'm taking coaching courses and other kinds of degrees that I can use to use in my other areas of psychiatry and psychology, like I'm doing the emotional management and stress course here now for CHS, because it's also something I'm very passionate about, being able to help people in every and any area. Thank you so much. That was um, a very honest and helpful um, summing up of your experience at the school and why you're here, which is one of the questions I want to ask our um, sixth form speakers. But we have um, questions for you from Aditya. Thank you, Mrs. Trafford. Kira, I'm in my GCSE year and I have a passion for corporate law. Is there anything you'd recommend for me to do? as you're also pursuing the law. And what type of law are you pursuing? That's a brilliant question, Aditya. And I think Julia would be more well equipped to answer this question than me. Like Julia, I'm a little bit more into the humanitarian aspect of law and being able to take law in that aspect and then do a master's in international law because I am taking law now. And I'll tell you, I am not interested in contract law <laughs> or tort law for that matter. Learning about the politics of it is a bit more interesting to me. So I would advise you to definitely take any economics you can and definitely a law A level because it's not requested for your um, exams or not sorry for your qualifications but it is putting you ahead of the game and it does help you get an understanding you may even realize you don't like law at the end of the day which I hope it doesn't happen to you but it's quite demanding as Julia might explain later on so being able to just surround yourself with things that make you curious and look in other areas of law as well because you never know it's such a wide field right Thank you. I'll get on to exploring law. It's a, a great question. And Aditya, I'll, I'll message you later, but you there are student internships um, for students at school. So from about age 16 plus, you can do one day, weekend, whole weeks, um, doing little internships. Um, and that will put you off. <laughs> no, I'm joking. Sounds like <laughs> a plan. Yeah, it's a good plan. Yeah, uh, Hafsa has a question. Hi, if you um, were if you were going to be a coach, um, what type of coach would you want to be? Great question, Hafsa, and thank you. Um, my mother is actually a life coach and she has a coaching degree. And I would say definitely watching her take that path of life, even though she has a different um, bachelor's, is quite interesting to me. So I would probably be a life coach or an emotional coach as well, because there's so many different areas of coaching you can do. And you don't have to choose one thing and focus it to be your career. Like Kayla said, you're nine to five. The, full is, the world is full of opportunities. You can choose anything and everything and have both, just as long as you know your limits. Good. Thank you, that's really cool. Yes. I just wanted to say one of the things I think we all should reflect on a little bit from what I've just heard the the the, the four students talking about. And, and Kayla made, made me really sit back and take note because she mentioned the idea of cost. And I think a lot of people won't even understand what, what Kayla was saying when she was talking about cost, the, the idea that depending on where you go to university, the cost, the difference is astronomical. For example, in Germany, university is free. In America, it's probably going to cost you probably approximately 100,000 per year. So it's really something to take note of. My, probably more, Ms. Strafford, I know. Uh, I was trying to be nice. I didn't want to scare people too much. So, so the cost can be 
it, it is a really, really important thing to think about, which I think 95% of people don't even consider. Um, so, so don't just automatically assume, of course, you want to see the world as your oyster, but you also have to be logical and sensible. And, and, and make when you're thinking about where you would like to study, it's important to have these conversations with parents to, to look at the idea of cost because it it is a monstrous factor and don't just assume you can go anywhere you want because the cost it varies so much the uk it's it's quite cheap at about nine thousand per year but then you have to pay living costs on top of that for example whereas if you went somewhere like 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 belfast which is different than london but it's still technically in the uk your costs are a third cheaper and i believe scotland's is scotland still very is it still free mr Trafford? It's free if you are uh, living in Scotland for the three years prior to to applying. But for my children, even though, you know, we've not been there for 10 years, no, they would have to pay. It's 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 so so I just want you to think, especially as you're getting closer to this decision, uh, the students doing their GCSEs and, and uh, lower sixth at the moment, level five, just think about that cost thing. And the second thing I just want to say, which I think was really, really interesting, sort of links to what pretty much everybody said, is the idea of experimenting. Please don't pigeon yourself at the age of seven, eight, 10, 12, even 15. Have fun. You know, full stop. That That's what life's about. It's not about sitting thinking I want to be a doctor from I'm seven years of age because my granny told me I should be a doctor. It is in, have fun, enjoy yourselves, try new things, whether it's, you know, anything at all. Like, like you know, as, as Kayla said, she just randomly started playing with music one day. Uh, and again, that's stuck to me because that that's just shaped the rest of your life. And if you don't try new things, who cares if you're bad at it? Don't worry if you try things and you're really, really bad. Just experiment, be brave, be creative, be innovative, and take take some risks in life. Don't, don't be too safe because if, if you're too safe, you might be completely closing off a full area of life that you might be interested in. So, so think about that as well. And don't just think because you don't do something now that you're not going to like it. How do you know you don't like something if you've never tried it? I will say nothing else. <laughs> Thank you. Well, we'll let Claire ask her question and then I have one more question for all our, our speakers. Yeah, so my question basically is, what was going through your head and how did you adopt, I think it was your cat right there, like from the street, how, like, what was the story behind that? Oh, thank you. This is probably the best um, question I've gotten all night. Um, I actually knew this cat since 2012 and I had moved back from England at the time and she was just roaming about a little antisocial. And then when I went to hospital and I came back, I was immunosuppressed, meaning my immune system was quite low. I wasn't allowed to socialize with other people, let alone my parents. So this cat was outside the window every day faithfully and I was feeding it. And I'm not supposed to have this cat and do not try this at home. Never do this unless your parents and your doctor are informed. But I was very lonely for two years in my defense. I was going to CHS at the time. And one day I just opened the window to see what it would do. And it just walked in and I debated with my parents, you know, that passion for law and international relations really came in. And I won the debate and she's been vaccinated, microchipped, everything all good. She's not harming my health. So we're quite happy together. Her name is Molly, by the way. Brilliant question, Claire. Brilliant answer, Kyra. Kyra, amazing, amazing. Um, yeah, most people, if they're having any sort of immunosuppressant treatment, no pets allowed. So well done, um, well done, Molly. Uh, I wanted to ask all our speakers, this is a brave question from me. I could put myself out of a job here. But um, do you think that being at an online school has shaped your decisions in, in a different way? Has it given you advantages or disadvantages or what, what do you think? So I'll, I'll let you jump in if any of our speakers have an opinion on that. Um, maybe you could, uh, because I'm interested in, in what's going through your minds, what, how you experience online school. I want to know. So did it influence your decisions in, in sick form in a different way or open things up for you in a different way? Um, so any of our speakers, stick your hand up if you want to come in on this and then I can um, invite you to speak. 
Yes, Julia, what do you think? Um, yes, for me, I feel like online schooling has given me an advantage because first, um, being the person I was coming into CHS and now is completely different. I mean, a lot of my classmates could agree with me because I came in and um, I was really in my comfort zone and being in this space where everyone is encouraging and always like helpful to each other has allowed me to gain more confidence and be able to reach out to stuff that I wouldn't normally do. And then as well for like applying to Cambridge, I think it is good because uh, the kind of school setting that we have in the classroom where they're just a few number of students with the teacher. And that is kind of like the kind of, uh, can't think of the word I wanted to say, but it's kind of that same setting in Cambridge where you have supervisions and it's just you and a couple of students and the teacher and being able to process your thoughts out loud and have that communication and being able to thrive in that environment. And I think the school has allowed that to happen, so yeah. Brilliant, thank you. And just differentiating, you're talking about the supervisions at Cambridge University and that similar experience you can get at Cambridge Homeschool Online, because some of your classes, there's only maybe two or three students in the in the class. Yeah, perfect. Um, so, Kyla, what, what do you think about that question? Mm, I really like it, and I, I'm glad that you asked, because I think that's a really important thing to address. I think that homeschooling is both incredibly easy and incredibly difficult um, in its own ways. It's so difficult. I mean, it's it's also something that's not really known. I mean, I go into the street and someone will be, oh, uh, so what school do you go to? Well, uh, online, like on your computer. Who teaches you? Is it is your mo your mom teaches you? N no, it's through a computer, and it's not something that a lot of people know about. But it, it's both an extremely useful kind of like form of education, but it's also very difficult because when I joined CHS. I had very little self-discipline and we never used to have like cameras on and you didn't really used to have to participate that much in a class with so many people. You would just stay silent and then, and then you could pretty much you could go and play video games if you wanted. But I think I very quickly learned um, that that is extremely not useful for me because you end up not paying attention. And as nice as that is in the moment, you ultimately jeopardize your learning and your education because you're not focusing, you're not paying attention. And I stayed back a year uh, because my exams came around after having not really focused in class. And I was like, I can't do it. I can't. Um, and so I lost a year to that. And if you ever feel in a class that you're getting bored and that it's not working out or you're not enjoying it, but you have to go through it because it's GCSEs or it's just something that you have to do, remind yourself that you have exams that will determine your intelligence. So when you apply to university, they're going to look at that grade. They're going to look at you and they're going to say, Ooh, D minus. Mm, sorry, not all of the time, but just remind yourself if you're struggling that there's going to be a future where you're going to need acceptable grades, if not incredible grades. Um, and that, that's something that reminds me, you know, when I think about my journey in CHS and having transitioned and how difficult it was to focus, that with time it gets easier because you get more used to it. But remind yourself that even though you know, school feels like it takes up 99% of your life. It doesn't. This is such a, a fraction of your life in total. So you need a base education um, because it'll guide you through many, many different courses and whatever you do in university. So when, like I said, if you feel like you're struggling, talk to your teachers. Your teachers are your, you know, authoritarians, but they're your friends as well in a way that you can talk to them. And you can open up to them. And that's something that I learned as well. Um, communication in CHS, there's 
there's no bullying here. There's no judgment. There's no harassment. This is an online school where everyone is in the same boat. We're all in the same situation. So if you need to talk to your teachers or you're struggling with subject or you're not comfortable or you're new and it's like such a like a mind boggling concept of like, how am I supposed to do schooling like this? Just talk. You need communication and you'll be fine. But just remind yourself that you're going to get exams and they're going to be hard. So you have to practice right from the start. You can't just like play Minecraft in the background while you leave the lesson running. Um, I learned that very quickly. But yeah, thank you for um, allowing me to speak. <laughs> I think that's a pretty important. I you know, did that myself. Yeah, and, and thanks for your, your honesty. And um, I'm glad you evolved. And uh, just as a reminder, we were cameras on school, folks. <laughs> Um, anyway, Kyra has got um, something to tell us also. Lovely. Thank you, Mrs Trafford. And as I said, I went to other schools as well, physical schools before the COVID and before I got ill. And they were very highly academic schools. They were good schools, but the environment of the pupillage and the teaching and etc. wasn't as supportive as I have seen in this school. I think an advantage that we have here is that obviously we have a very warm and close knit community and it's just people trying to support each other without competing with each other, without coming at each other's throats. It's just where you can be yourself and ask for help and get that help that you need. The school team is here for you. Your teachers are here for you. And I think as important as Kayla said, your friends are also here for you. Because I know, for example, me and Kayla and Jude, I'm like, we had this assignment due this week. They're like, no, it's next week. I'm like, whew, thank goodness. And I couldn't exactly do this at a physical school. And sometimes I arrange study sessions with my friends on my level and we just come and we do some poetry together like me and Jude did and many other opportunities. It's just a very good community where you can flourish truly and there are opportunities here that you may not get at normal schools such as people positions of responsibility different clubs law even in itself as an a level is very rarely offered in uk so i'm quite privileged to have this very difficult a level offered to me and i'll do my best to honor it so yes it's the community it's the teachers it's the quality of what we have here as a combination of both Thank you and thank you so much and I, I think I ought to add that we didn't have prepped you on that I just was curious and um, you know I've got children your age and I thought well, I wonder what it's like you know what's going through your mind and whether it's been a good choice for you and obviously you're at the end of your time at the school coming up you've got one more term really realistically and um, it's worked for you so I'm really pleased to to hear it. Uh, Mr Boylan, I was going to just thank our speakers so much and let everyone give them a big round of applause, but did you have anything else you wanted to add, sir? No, to, to be honest, it, it, it's the thing I love is when I can just sit back and listen. Normally I have to do all the talking, so when I can sit back and just <laughs> listen, it's it's very interesting as a teacher to, to just sort of shut up and listen, because we and actually let other people take control of the answers who are probably way better equipped than me. I went to university. I, I applied to university 18 years ago. You know, it's a, uh, I don't know what's going through the student's mind. So I just want to say a huge thank you to the, to the students for giving up their time. And I think the bit I liked most about it was that it was honest and it, and it taught me, you know, as I said, I had two things I wrote down, but also, I think the key message I think people should take away from this is that there's no right answer. D d you know, we're all going to go our own path, our own journey. You know, if you had have asked me 10 years ago, would I be sitting, uh, you know, as a deputy head in an online school? I would have thought you were crazy. So, so it goes back to the idea of taking risks, taking opportunities and do things you're going to enjoy, that you're going to be passionate about. So. Don't don't let yourself be pigeonholed. And, you know, I think the the four students that spoke such different backgrounds, such different aspirations. But I think the same message is there. Do something you're passionate about. That That's the one thing that keeps shining true. Mm. Don't do something for the sake of someone else. Do it for you. Yeah, absolutely, and I, Mr. Boylan. And I'm so sorry to interrupt, but Jude also had her hand up and she was missed. Ooh. So if it will be all right for her to speak a little. Oh. Please do, Jude. I've missed your hand. I'm so sorry. No, no, no worries. Um, I was just going to say the exact same thoughts as Kayla, Julia and Kyra said. 
it's a very friendly environment. It's a non-judgmental environment. I've never really experienced it in my physical schools because um, this is only my first year and sadly my last year of online school. And the year previously, I was doing home studies independently with other tutors. So I just wanted to say that online school is easy, as Kayla said, but also difficult because you need to have a lot of organization. You need to organize yourself. You need to prioritize your time, have time management, know what you're up against. And um, it's not that, you know, your friends, your peers, they, they will help you. They will support you. And I felt this through this environment because in my physical school, I, I was with procrastinators. I was with people who did not want to go to university, who did not have a plan for the future. And I'm just sitting there in sixth grade already planning that I wanted to go to Oxford <laughs> five years down the line. And no one, everyone thought I was nuts because I was planning early. But I must say that we have a very friendly environment, very close knitted environment. And an advantage is that the clubs, the uh, head pupil positions, I mean, I haven't done debate for five years and I started it just again. I was a bit rusty in the first <laughs> month, but I got back at it. So, yeah, I mean, exact same process as everyone else. And I think the main takeaway of this is that do something that you are passionate about, that you're interested in, because if you're not motivated at all in that certain aspect, you're not going to really succeed in life or feel happy in your life. Brilliant. Um, thank you so much, Jude. And I'm so sorry to end this because this has been my favourite by far Cambridge lecture um, so far. And, and I say that, I'm sorry, Mr. Boyle, and yours was very good. Um, and yours and as well, Miss Trafford. I agree. Thank it's you. Just nice. and, the and students are way better than me and you. I 100% agree. I can agree Dickinson anymore. Matt Dickinson and, and um, Sita are, are authors. They were fantastic too, but uh, we've set a very high bar now, a very high bar. And um, maybe everyone could give you all a big round of applause, a lovely Cambridge Homeschool round of applause. Uh, really fantastic and we will um, hopefully continue with our questions um, on our own team chats. Thank you so much. Good night. Thank you so much. Have a great week. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you so very much. Good night. Bye. Take care. Bye-bye.